Hello, 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 Matt, 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 Matt. I don't know how to do an intro. What's up? Hola. We're we really Spanish. should play music now that now that it's bugging me when I listen to talking baseball. Wom Hola. <laughs> the part you guys miss is the glorious <laughs> head movement that went with that. Oh, they'll get the effect. You yeah, know, you might get the it. audio effect, but it's just something that's. It goes back to the time in Boston that we've told you about where Matt dances with really just straight, you know, flex your palm and your hand to be completely flat and then just stab at places. And it was basically the same exact thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, just those with quick. The, with the womps. It's quick movements. Throws them all off. They don't yeah. know what to do. The, uh, the make old, sure people don't dance with you or in your space. Quick movements. Quick jab movements. The old video slash gif of the, like, uh, kids dancing doing the. Like the weird, like, you know, like the goth kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dancing under the bridge. Uh, yeah, under the bridge. <laughs> that that yes. came around again, and I was like, oh, I got to figure out how to dance like that. It's like, the same thing with that. We were discussing the Baby Yoda memes of him playing, trying to play random music. It's the same thing when people put that to other music. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm about this. This is a fun time. Anyway, what are we doing? Uh, this is the Gamers 2 podcast for December. I don't know what today is. December 20th, uh, 2019. We're almost at the end. End of the decade. Is it? Is that how that works? Isn't it I next believe, year? Everyone keeps saying end of the decade. I don't know if that's... Wait, I what think... year is it? 2019. So you would have had... So it goes... Yep, they're counting from 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Is how they're counting it. Mm-hmm. But there was no year zero. It starts counting at one. So technically yeah. next year would be the end of the decade. But we're all too stupid of a society to figure that out. Yeah, I didn't really think about that, but people keep saying end of the decade. But Yep, everybody's running with the end of the decade, but there is no year, such thing as year zero, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. I, all right, well, know, maybe we'll some do some research person, on that. Some history person will clearly listen to this podcast and go, that man is wrong, and I will prove to him with scientific data and links to those articles that are on scholarly websites, not Wikipedia. And I'll go, a fair play. We'll do some more research on that, and we'll come back to you uh, next week when it is the closer. And by Even that, I mean closer. Matt might. I'm not going to. So I appreciate you if you do it. But okay. I'm, I'm not going to um, I'm going to stick with my joke. All right. All right. Fine. That's cool. I mean, I'm probably going to forget, too. So we'll see. Perfect. We'll see. Maybe That's I'll the way this a... podcast works. We say we're going to do something. We forget to do it. Well, maybe I'll make a note of it somewhere. And... Huh. <laughs> <laughs> who, oh, who do you th- what do you think? I use sticky notes at work or something to remember what I was supposed to do? No, I use the app sticky notes on Windows for that. I forgot that existed. Mm-hmm. That's how I was keeping track of the players to avoid in WoW before I could just put them all in the guild. <laughs> I got the old uh, flip notebook. Ah, see, yellow pages. Ooh, a legal pad. Yeah. Ooh. But not no. the big one, the little. Oh, okay, okay. One of our, one of my coworkers with the Uncharted that. Four pen. Oh, too fail. <laughs> sure. All right, no need to brag. Uh, one of my coworkers uses a notebook for mm-hmm. everything that he does, just so he has like notes or whatever. He's like, if anybody looked at this, they'd think I was insane. I feel you, bro. <laughs> I was like, I, yeah, that's why I don't do it. I just keep sticky, sticky notes that are bullet points that say I need to do that. Once that's gone, I just delete the entire thing. Every once in a while, Samantha will come in and look at the the notepad, and she's just like. What the fuck? And I'm like, well, this corner over here is uh, PC case dimensions that I'm trying to figure out. This corner over here is uh, some commands for cheat codes or something. And like this, this list here is lightsaber parts that I need. Like it's <laughs> for this game. Like, like oh, so I need a Kyber crystal, but I also need a co- like, oh, need a handles. You need, you yeah, know, it's, uh, it's chaos. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember the technical parts of the lightsaber, so I'm just gonna stop talking now. That's After cool. Kyber crystal and like handle and ends, I kind of lose it. And I know that's not the, not the technical name for those either. A wrap. You might need a wrap. That's technical. Well, it depends. I guess it depends on what you, depends what, on what kind of saber you're building. What you know? source too? Like you know, is it a, is it the movies? Is it the book? Is what it, if it's just my blood? Is it Code R two? What if it's nothing but pure blood? Is it Fallen Order? That's a Sith lightsaber. Okay. No, no, pure blood. Pure blood. I just. It's just blood. It's like a rope almost. It doesn't get it doesn't get strong. It's just like oh, saber whip. That's a blood whip. Anyway, I saw that so, in an anime once. 
<laughs> why does why is everything I come up with? You're like, you know, that happened in an anime once. I don't want to know. It's just Japanese, man. They're weird people. Yeah, they're ahead of me in all my ideas. I hate it. Yeah. Same way whenever I start reading a story and I'm like, man, wouldn't it be funny? And you're like, just please keep reading. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> son of a bitch. Anyway, we do things here. Sometimes. Apparently not. Not in the first five minutes. Um, Am I supposed to tell you what I've been doing this week? Is that You're where right. We're at? You're right. It has been seven days, Matt. And as this is tradition for seven days, we eventually get to the news. But first, we bullshit, as we've clearly been doing. So what have you been doing for the last seven days? Yeah. So the normal stuff that I say every week, baseball anime, progressing. We, episode a week. You know, that's how that works. Uh, it's going oh, sorry. along. Sorry, you can't be blessed with binge watching everything in a one day method. It's just fantastic. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm not going to go into details because obviously you I, I don't want you to spoil it for me. Yeah, I'm going to definitely. I'm going. I'm definitely going to catch up to <laughs> episode 250. Naturally, um, <laughs> what is different? I mean, we saw Star Wars, but we don't necessarily have to talk about that. I, I um, I'm going to ask you when it comes to me about it, <laughs> uh, but with a spoiler free. Yeah, it's fine. Tag. I don't want to discuss spoilers. We could do that another time if we so chose, mm-hmm. but you having to work and stuff. I was yeah. debating doing a spoiler cast, but it would just be us potentially being pissy for 30 minutes, yeah, and that's just not going to get... That's not, Nobody wants to listen to us be angry, except everybody does, because that's when I get fucking... <laughs> Sorry, continue. Yeah, seven days. We saw Star Wars. It was a thing. Continue. We saw Star Wars. Uh, Mandalorian had an interesting episode. Uh, we oh, watched yeah. the first episode of The Witcher. We did watch the first episode of The Witcher. I rather enjoyed it. I'm really happy you did, because I, at the same time, went... All right. Yeah, like I, I almost mean, McConaughey'd myself. All I can right, see, all right, all right. like it's in the weeds, you know. Like I, I was. It's a good start. I was barely, you know, like I'm. I never played The Witcher. I played like four or five hours of The Witcher. So I didn't play just for a quick. I didn't play one or two. I played mm-hmm. fifty some odd or seventy some odd hours of three. Fifty some odd hours in the main, and then up to seventy after the DLCs came out. And I've not read any of the books, which I've wanted to, but I just haven't gotten around to. I've got other things I need to read, which I'll get to. Yeah. Um, so, like, they don't shy away from the universe as far as, like, names, countries, all that good stuff goes. And I followed along enough. Like, I don't know intimate details about it, but whatever. You know, I still enjoyed the show. Which is good. That's yeah. what you need. You need to. Not, you need to be able to not rely on people that know the content yeah so it's it it was good i'm looking forward to watching more episodes uh so are we gonna make that the friday show we can we definitely can okay that means i'm watching semen on vacation probably semen the grand tour oh okay yeah (laughs) um depends on what my uh streaming services are like down there obviously i can log into things but yeah all right uh just because that's that's an hour and a half that we're not going to be able to watch both of those unless we have to record on a Saturday at like 2. That's true. Um, anyway, yeah. So, Witcher. I'm trying to think of... Yeah, so else? that's about it for viewing uh, game-related. I finished The Outer Worlds. Um, thoughts? Closing thoughts? You know what? That's a weird game. N- weird for me, personally. All right. Well, this is going to be really interesting for somebody to tweet because your last tweet was about it not being broken and it you know being a nice, refreshing change. No, here's things. the thing. And I, I have, I pride myself on the ability to remove, you know, to separate the subjective from the objective. Objectively, I can look at the game, I can play the game, and I'm like, this Should is a good game. Should we discuss Star Wars now, then? <laughs> <laughs> Which, it's going to factor in, too. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Subjectively, I don't know what it was, but, like, I just lost interest in it. You didn't get drawn in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get drawn in, and I think there's just something about the world that's just not quite as like lived. Doesn't have quite that like lived in feeling. Mm. Well, um, it's not technically post apocalyptic like other fallouts would be. Yeah, where it was clearly lived in, and now there's nothing. Yeah, you're in space. Yeah, it just didn't. Something about it, like it didn't quite give you that grandiose feel that I thought it would. You know, for it being a colony and okay. like a space colony and all that. But so essentially what happened was I got like in, I was doing all the side quests. I was playing an RPG, how I normally play an RPG, as you know, which is I go through and I, you know, I, I go through every little detail. There's a reason Matt doesn't stream. Actually, I should say that there's multiple reasons. 
But if you ever watch this man play an RPG, you'd want to you, shoot yourself in the head or just gouge your eyes out because nothing would be happening. So you'd be watching a man read. I got I was playing that way and it would definitely rewards you for playing that way because like there's little hidden, you know, it's it's like New Vegas, like you could pick up something on a shelf somewhere randomly that will help you help you later yeah yeah or like you'll find like a little like vent that takes you around something that type of thing the which old is, you ha- happen to come upon a quest completion item and then you walk into the person that's like hey i have a quest for this and you're like oh you mean this thing and there you go see you later yep um i just got to the point where i was sick of playing it and not not sick of playing it, i just lost interest and i didn't want to drag it out and have it be a bad experience so right and it on a, try to end it on a good note. And, uh, so I literally just zipped right through the um, the main story, and it was it was cool. Like I mean, I I get why it was nominated for a game of the year. I get why it got all the praise. It just wasn't doing it for me personally. Um, I played a little bit of I down, re-downloaded, played a little bit of Black Mesa because they finally finished it. They finished the add-on Zen Worlds for Black Mesa's the remake of Half Life. Haven't finished it. I just started it basically. Um, I downloaded and played a little bit of uh two Star Wars Galaxies emulators. So I believe I saw one of them because you sent it to me. I did, and you said, and I just went, oh no. <laughs> so. The, I know I know what that means. Yeah, so there's two. One is uh what the game was like when it launched, how I played it, which was uh that one's called SWG EMU. It just stands for Star Wars Galaxy Emulator. Um and it's the Basilisk server. In case anyone's curious. And it's like mega early game. Um the basilisk part is mega early game, or like the that emulator, emulator oh, okay, is, okay. and server. Excuse me, is early game. Uh, you know, like all of the professions. You know, crazy sandbox. Uh, I jumped into that, played for like a few minutes, was like, all right, cool, and then I jumped into Star Wars Galaxies Legends, which is um, that one's the game. As it shut down, basically, like its most most content and its complete overhaul, the new game experience where there's only eight professions, um, that one. And that one I've played the most of so far because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to play. And I think I'm going to stick with that one because it has the most active community. And there is regularly – it has there's just one server. And there is like regularly like fifteen hundred people on at oh, a time. I mean, so, I mean, for one server for a dead game, yeah. So, uh, and it's like you hop in the Discord and like you need help with something or you have a question or like, hey, like does anyone have this thing? And people are like, boom, I'll meet you there, like because it's you know small community. Yeah, gotta keep it alive. Yep. Um, and that's that's about it, I think. Um. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Still have uh, Need for Speed installed, but I haven't played it, so I don't know. I uninstalled it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. I one. reached the point where I was just like, oh, I played Reach too. Ah, yeah, you finally got that working. Yeah, which it's Reach. I don't know. It's yeah, there. yeah. It's, <laughs> a, it's the same. Well, the same thing with Classic. You're like, all right, it's Walk Classic. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's the thing. It exists. You can go back and look at my stuff in 2011. You know, same yeah. thing. It's funny because like 10, I play. I play it, it but to me, it looks the same. Right, but you know, if you if I went back and if you watched actually the video put them side or... by side, you'd be like, oh, yeah. But it's the same thing with like if you for I'm sure for some kids, if you had gone back and played like Legends of the Wind Waker or something, you'd be like, man, Breath of the Wild looks exactly like that. And you go back and play, you're like, oh no, no, it doesn't. But that's just what you thought it looked like at the t- at the time. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. How about you? What do you got? Indigestion. For me? Upset stomach, you know, diarrhea. Hey, 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 pup, pup. I could tell you some stories about that this we, week. <laughs> Listen, You're... I thought I was, I almost called in the work one day because I just straight up, I went to, I came into work late. I was 20 minutes late because I just couldn't get off the toilet. It was terrible. Welcome to the toilet podcast <laughs> where we discuss why Matt and I are, are like the movie Hancock. And every time he comes around, I upset his intestines. That's true. I, That's I, true. I don't understand it. 
I turn into what's the Apex Legends dude with the poison gas? Caustic. I turn into Caustic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's him. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because initially we thought it was the house, and then I went over to your house for the game awards. Yeah, no, nah, same thing, same problem. Yep, candles were needed. Yeah. Anyway, so things I've been doing, not gassing myself out of my own house. Um, it's been it's been a slow week. Yeah. Uh, Kenny's on travel, so we only got so much FM in. I am the I was I the new manager of a club last time? Yes. Um you would there I, was drama. I am the new manager still of a club. I'm still of that club. Mm-hmm. Uh we're working on figuring it out. We're not doing terrible. So I almost I saw I you guys still screaming at my children that aren't learning how to put ball in net cuz oh I could beat them. I saw you guys were on playing and you were in Discord. And I was going to hop into Discord and act like a sports reporter and be like, here we have the manager of like, and I, cause it tells you what team you're managing. Oh, okay, okay. So I knew what teams you guys were managing and yeah. I was going to hop in there and, and, but then I was like, I don't know. Like, I know you would think it was funny, but I was like, I don't want to, like, if Kenny's in, you know, I don't want to piss him off or something. He'd, so he'd play along with it as long as he, well, actually, he'd play along with it, especially if he was losing, because then it would just be him being angry and him angry. <laughs> I just, I just stay silent. <laughs> it's not worth. It's not worth the, you know, it's not even worth trying to talk him down. He'll do it himself. I just need to give him the time. Yeah, yeah, he's one of those people that where if I get truly angry, I will get quiet and let it just stew in me. Mm-hmm. He will vocalize everything and eventually bring himself back yeah. down. Like he hears himself and he's like, "All right, I'm just being ridiculous." And well, it's not even that he's just being ridiculous. He'll eventually just kind of be like, "All right, I just got to figure this out." But he's one that like I have a person I play volleyball with it the same way. When he screws up, he'll start like screaming like, oh, you son of a bitch or something like that. And people will think they mean he's talking to them. He's talking to himself. He just Mm -hmm. does it out loud. Yeah. But and I'm used to it. I know he's not saying anything to me, but immediately everybody else takes offense to it. I'm like, I understand. But he's not actually yelling at you. Sometimes he does. The majority of the time, he's angry at himself for missing an easy play or something along those lines. Anyway, what have I been doing? So, FM20, that that was a thing. Um, That's really been it. I mean, I played a little bit of Call of Duty. I played a little bit of WoW. I don't know what to do in WoW Classic anymore. It's kind of a problem. Because uh, I didn't raid with the guys. I don't know that I, I even can get myself to be like, yeah, let's raid. I don't know. It just, it's, there's not a spark yet. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's just hard kinda, to revisit games. Right. And I always have a problem revisiting games. And it was nice leveling up because I had Todd to level with me. So it was, and it's, a, and it's a clearly defined like goal. Right. And I know what we're doing and I know where we're going and everything. But now that it's just the, and this is the same problem I have with Black Desert. Well, no, not really, but. You know, Todd's like, I'm just making money. And I'm like, that's cool, man. But for what end? I appreciate that that's what you want to do. And you're doing good. You're you're a great player. One of the best I've ever played with. But fuck off. (laughs) 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 Not really. But, you know, it just gets to the point where I'm like, I just don't know what to. I've almost reinstalled retail. I don't know how many times. Because when I bought Classic, I bought it with a six-month time frame. So I have time, I think, until February. Mm-hmm. And I've almost reinstalled the retail just to like level up my stuff before the new expansion. I can't bring myself to do that either. That's kind of why like I installed the first Star Wars emulator and it's it's the full on sandbox. And I don't know I, I got in it and I, I was like installed the old Republic. I was like, I don't know where to go from here. I that was the other one with the old Republic, but I the problem with the old Republic is now I'd I'd have to re-roll a new character because it's just There's so much, yeah. There's so much and like I wouldn't remember where I was or anything. Yeah, so. no, I mean we would end up running up together and then be like And I've had so many updates too. Oh yeah. I, it would be it would be beneficial if we just ran two new characters, but yeah. Either way, that's still that's still you know another paying option and stuff like mm-hmm. that because we would we if we did it we would a hundred percent pay for it we would not yeah, do even though there's the free that. model the free model is just I don't it's it's nice that you can play it for free but it's just not as nice as <laughs> it's <laughs> worth the money to get the better experience right. yep um yeah so those things uh 
Pokemon. Pokemon. Still trying. I think I got another a little over a hundred and thirty maybe left to go to complete the Pokedex. That seems like a lot, but there's probably like eight hundred. No, there's four hundred, I believe. And I'm over two fifty. I just don't know where in two fifty I'm over. And I have to double check. I have to now go back through. I have to spend a day and go through the Pokedex and double check how I need to get some of those. Mm -hmm. Because it might just be ones that I already have that I just need to evolve. Uh, But I just need to, like, look and everything and go, oh, okay. I can be done in, like, two hours if I just sit down and do it. Yeah. Um, Or uh, I need to get, like, Dewey on the horn so I can do some of the ones that are supposed to happen from trading. Mm. So, those are the things that I've been doing. Play a little bit of the show. Typical stuff. Phone stuff. But it's just kind of been a... It's been a lax week. Be, when he started traveling, and then because Todd's been playing, wow, I've just kind of been like, what do I, what do, I do? I don't know what to do. I don't, and, and nothing's grabbing at me. That's the thing. I uninstalled Need for Speed because just I, I played another two races, I think, and I was just like, I don't care anymore. Yeah, it's like the same. There's no incentive to keep playing. Like, yeah, I was just kind of like, all right. I mean, it, the story didn't grab me or any part of it. No. Like, the driving was better than previous Need for Speeds for sure. Yeah, for sure. But I was just kind of like, okay, that's. You know what the problem is? Ra- racing games, I need to be in a mood for. Part of the racing game issue too is that right now Forza just does everything better. So it's like, yeah, and Horizon was so good with. Uh, it wasn't so much you needed to... I don't remember you needing to level up to unlock cars. You just needed to get the money to do it. Yeah, you know, you which came fairly easy. Yeah, and now the whole thing was, oh, you level up these cars, and you have to level up all the parts. And I was like, ah, oh, no. Yeah. Let me just buy the car and then tune the car, but I don't need to level up the parts. And yeah. Regardless, it, it was not a bad game. It was yeah. just... It's not... It wasn't for me at the time. Um, and it's just kind of been a... You know, stop playing FIFA because I'm gonna. I canceled my my EA thing should run out in two days, so that's that's over. The only thing I'll need Origin for for a while is gonna be if I reinstall Apex randomly or something. Yeah, uh, I gotta remember to do that as well. What? Uh, cancel my access thing. Oh yeah, but it's just there hasn't been. Is there? That might, it might be the wind. Could be. It kind of sounded like uh, a speaker almost. But I don't think it's your PC. I think it's um sounds like a muffled speaker or it could be the wind, like a vibrating. Might be, might be the wind. There's no speakers on. TV's off downstairs, both of them. It's Max. And it's not Max because I can see him. He's not washing. But that is the sound rough <laughs> he, would, he would make when he was washing. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I need to move on from this because I can't really think of anything. That... Slow week. I mean, you know, Slow everyone's week, everyone's busy. Preparing next for next the week, I will one hundred percent have things I've I've played and done or whatever. But it's just kind of been a it's been a whatever week, man. It bums me out, kind of, because I want to have something to play that I'm like, all right, cool. This is what I'm playing. But everything at the moment is like everybody's doing other things for the games that I would enjoy. Like Call of Duty, I can play maybe two games by myself, and I'm like, I just don't care. It's more fun when I play with somebody, and that is a whole thing. Uh, except that Call of Duty will piss Todd off to the point where he won't play anymore. So I gotta, I gotta pick my moments. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, so that was a thing. I'm gonna start reading a book uh, about baseball, baseball statistics, and saber metrics and stuff. Just because I have a a very base understanding, mm-hmm. especially of the the entry level saber metrics, mm-hmm. but there's so many more that I f- I want to learn, and so I'm hoping this book will give me a good basis and overview. Uh, Reddit Secret Santa happened. Yeah, that worked. I out well. had a I have a sweet picture of three Yankees that are all signed pictures. I believe they're printed signatures, not actual signatures, but either way, the photo looks cool. It's a cool thing to have. I really appreciate it. 
I do need to take a picture of it later and post it on, on Reddit to confirm that I received my gift. Uh, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Really well wrapped and everything. Yeah. It was, it was like nice. It was. It was, uh, it looked like, uh, it was very like thoughtful. Thoughtful and professional. Yeah, the, the bow in particular the was bow well job done. Was... <laughs> bow job? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was that was nice. It was a nice thing to get. Uh we have lemon meringue candies. Yep. We got some of our favorite gummies in the world. Yeah, ate those. Yep, those are gone. Lemon meringue candies aren't yet though. Uh I have stuff under the tree I'm not allowed to touch until I'm given the okay to open. You know, it's a it's a good time. It's a good time to to be alive. But we've been we watched The Witcher. Which are we gonna are we gonna keep that as our Friday show? Yeah. Okay. I think so. I will hold off on episode two then. Because I can I can watch the whole thing right now. I mean if you want to no, watch it, go no, for no, it. No, There's other show. things we can watch. Oh, trust me. I have enough that I also need to watch that I can avoid doing that. I still have to finish Man in the High Castle. Stuff like that. I have two episodes to go in that. Binge of Jack Ryan season. It'll be I'll, I'll be fine. Uh yeah, we watched The Witcher. I already talked about that. Watched um Star Wars. And I want to know your thoughts on Star Wars episode nine. No spoilers. And then we need to get moving. Uh the Gimme your gimme your top level three bullet point. I think review thing. I think based on what they were handed from eight, they did an a, a decent job of of wrapping it up. Um, my I'm just I was never going to be happy with it, no matter what, because the new trilogy is so disjointed. Based like they're all just so different that it didn't, right. it wasn't cohesive enough to for me to be okay with it. But the big takeaway from me was I just wasn't happy with the characters. Like, I didn't like what decisions they were making, um, the way they were, like, communicating with each other. Like, I just, like, the bickering, be- I, I liked, like, the little things, like, the bickering, that type of humor I actually liked. Um, but it's the, oh, uh, let's go back in the house horror motif. Yeah. And you're like, oh, come on. Like, it's like, you guys know all, like, you know, all the stories, you know, how this is, you know, supposed to work and, and you're, uh, you know, you're making the same, de- same bad decisions. So cops, man, five Oh <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Um, well, well, uh, two of them, I- I'll probably rewatch it at some point. I'll probably rewatch it too, but I-, I don't plan on going back to the theater to see it again. Unless like Todd wants to go or, or somebody that is around that I don't see or whatever is like, oh, might, you want to go watch it? That that's one thing. But. I think what I plan to do is I think I might go back to Rome and do a matinee because they're only five bucks. Yeah, but I would just do a matinee at Mar- at Marquee at that point. Rome Rome just has it just rubs me the wrong way constantly. I feel like I'm walking into we can't win with movie experiences. First off, for, first off, I agree we can't. But second off, it reminds me of ru- walking into a rundown North Utica Regal. I, I can see that. Or closer to the uptown. The thing is, like, I don't know if you went there when it was truly bad. No, I didn't. Because I, was... I, might, I might have gone for one movie and then just been like, never again. Yeah. And I blocked it out of my memory what even movie that was. But I know I've seen a movie in Rome before that. There's a theater in Oneida, too. I don't know if you've ever been to that one. No, I'm not going to go all the way to Oneida for a movie. Also interesting, although I hear that it's a lot better now. They probably have a hole in the wall for penises. I mean, it was it was at that stage at one point. Oh boy. <laughs> um Yeah, no. I mean the mark the marquee is is just better. And now that they've gone under under their renovation of actually being able to pick seats and stuff, it's a lot. Yeah. Besides, we saw When the and, system works. Well, yeah, when the <laughs> system works. Uh but I mean like for a matinee, you could walk in there and pick your seat. Like yeah. it, on the thing in the building. Yep. Hell, we saw Endgame. There were, what, six people in each of our theaters? Yep. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll, uh, I'm, I'm still, like, processing it and thinking about it, but... So, I've, I've read some stuff Reddit-wise, just trying to get... Seeing if anybody's really wrapped up my thoughts on it without me having to, like, really think about it. Like, 
Is that how I feel? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much how I feel. And I still feel the same as I did walking out of the theater. Other than arguing with your brother, which I will never not do if we bring up Star Wars, because it's always a, it's always a fun time, and I would like to actually sit down with him at some point to rather than us just go, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, and go. I want to know why. Give me your reasons why you think eight was good. Like, actually break it down for me, and I'll mm-hmm. tell you fundamentally why you're wrong. Mm-hmm. But I I I want to actually know what he thinks. But that's mm-hmm. the beauty of the whole thing. Other people can have different opinions. That's fine. I still stay stand with the same the same point you made the first time. For the hand that J.J. Abrams was dealt for Episode Nine, he did pretty good. Yeah, yeah. he played Pocket Twos the best way he could. <laughs> and when I say Pocket Twos, you don't think that's that bad of a hand. Technically, the worst hand I've ever seen is a two seven offsuit. But Pocket Twos, it's he gets Pocket Twos because he's J.J. and J.J. doesn't make bad movies. Technically, like he just doesn't make bad. They're not going to be great, but he doesn't disappoint you yeah. they're just kind of there so he's playing with that and he managed to not win the pot on the table but he didn't fold in the first hand yeah ryan johnson walked to the table during eight and flipped it over <laughs> and said we're not playing poker fuck off so it, it, it didn't help anybody um uh, and what what i always try to think like go like i think i had the same issue last last star wars as well where i went into it and i had the movie was bad but the experience i was having was bad as well so like it kind of compounded the issue and i think that happens because it's it's star wars and like as much as i want to not let it affect me it does because it's such a if if it's like it's it carries such undertones in my life because like i've just been into it for so long And, like, I was getting emotional. I was trying to hide it, but I was getting really emotional during the movie because I was, like, it was hitting me that it's, like, the last of the saga. So I was, like, starting to, like, low-key tear up and, like, cry, even though, like, there was nothing on screen that was, like... (laughs) I had the the one moment where... I slightly choked, and I was like, you better you do not fucking do that right now. <laughs> That's why I was like, lock it down. <laughs> yeah. I shut myself down because it was right... It was uh, the... It was the one scene mm-hmm. where... Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was the scene where, mm. uh, and you know that <laughs> I I, can't, I don't want to say it. I don't want to spoil anything. I can't yeah. spoil anything. It's, it's good. It's good. Like but it. you you know what I mean. Yeah, that it was that scene where I was just like, you don't do it. I I said in the beginning, you do not do that during this movie. You do not do it during any movie. Stop it. And I was yeah. just like, all right, I'm good now. I'm good. That was the only time I kind of like went, <gasps> yeah, ha, ha, you just, ha, yeah, punched me in the gut. Um, otherwise, it, yeah, he did the best with the hand he was dealt. I think because uh, a couple of guys from work wanted to know because they were going to see it in a couple days or after Christmas. That was part of their vacation plans. Yeah. But they, they're like, you have roughly the same thought we do on – seven and eight and kind of other movies you kind of fall in line with us so they're like we want to know first impressions after you see this because we're expecting it to be terrible Mm -hmm. based on what eight was yeah and i told them i was like if you keep in mind the hand he was dealt it's pretty good but if you didn't watch eight i think if you don't watch eight first off you shouldn't watch nine that doesn't make any sense at all to me but if you didn't watch eight and you just watch nine it's not a good movie because there it doesn't it needs seven and eight. Yeah. If you just watch it on, it's not a bad movie, but it loses the, me calling it good. And then there's still the, I said, I think like five or six moments. I can't think of distinctly that are me going the fuck. Like you just cut from one thing and then you cut to the next thing. And you're like, there's no correlation at all right now as to why you needed to do this. Specifically the, once again, the one thing that happened and you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, That's, that's all. I, I think if you've watched 7 and 8, and regardless of your feelings on 8, still watch it. Whether you watch it right away or not, you know, take some time. Do a matinee showing. Mm-hmm. The thing for me with the movie is, like, with this, with 8, I couldn't understand why people would like it. With this one, I get it. Like, eight, I, if someone's like, oh, I like this movie, I get it. Like 8 was the, for me, was, I don't understand how somebody could tell me they liked the movie. I can understand how you could argue you liked parts of the movie. Yeah. That's acceptable. The movie as a whole is hot garbage. 
but what <laughs> this one yeah same thing i can 100 percent understand if somebody goes i really like that movie i can also understand if somebody says i really hate that movie but that person yeah. that says i really hate that movie not being you but mm-hmm. it's usually somebody it's somebody's gonna hate this entire trilogy yeah and they're gonna hate it for the same reason everybody should hate it it's not continuous throughout the entire thing the storyboard for that looks once again going back to my string and th- you know thumbtack plan it's basically that except stretched over a map of the u.s and then they nuked half of it yeah anyway let's uh get going yeah to the next m- segment the new releases curated by the one the only Dun, 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 dun. Uh, not him, but Nate Killian. <laughs> you can't see me. You actually can't. It's just my voice. I like it. There you go. I, if I was actually going to do that, it, it, once again, it would be the Hurricanes music. Oh, yeah. Because there's nothing better than when I could play that, and Dewey just goes, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Anyway, so should we get into the new releases? <laughs> yeah, it's the <laughs> it's the forearm thing where because I think at one point he held like part of his cape up. Yep. He just did the. <sighs> yep. Mm-hmm. It, it, man, I miss that era of wrestling. Only of the sense of I, when I say that era, I mean the era where you taped your hand halfway up your forearm. Yeah. And it was just all tape, and you're like, yeah, forearm hair is gonna rue the day it met me. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, man. Number one, uh, you're going to see a, a pretty good theme in this list, Matt. Number one, Art Pulse. Actually, two themes. I should say that. Art Pulse for PlayStation. Demon Pit for PlayStation. Demons with Shotguns for PlayStation. Helma the Badass from Hell for PlayStation. Party Trivia for PlayStation. Sacrilith the Archer's Tale for PlayStation. Sims 4 University for PlayStation and Xbox. Untitled Goose Game for PlayStation, Watam for PC, PC and PlayStation, and Exposed for PlayStation. I don't know if my site broke that I normally use. The only thing I saw worth calling out, there were some Switch games listed or whatever. All PlayStation titles. So I don't know if, once again, the PlayStation Store is a cesspool or not. Probably a cesspool. I am going to jump through some stuff, and I'm going to let you take number one. Uh, number one, we got some Elon so, Musk. Ooh, oh, yeah, news. News is a thing we do. Eventually, yeah, we get eventually, there. Eventually, we'll get there. We'll always get there. It's not about the 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 destination. It's about the journey? Sure. Sounds right. Does that, does that sound like a Gandalf thing? Yeah, sounds good. Who gives a shit about the ring in Mordor? Yeah. It's all about the midgets we all killed along the way? Yeah. Exactly. That's what he says, right? Him and Shelob. <laughs> Gollum can throw some Gollum action I, in there. I, I refuse to. How is that actually pronounced? Because that's I've, I'll, I've always pronounced it. What? The spider. Uh, I don't know. That sounds good. Uh, that's how it's phonetically written. S-H-E-L-O-B. I don't know how else he pronounce it. I don't know if it, it would be like Shelob or something like that. It's got to be Shelob. Shelob just is too entertaining for me. Yo, did you meet that she hyphen lob? She lobbed what? <laughs> she didn't fucking lob Frodo into the caves of hell. Anyway, can you in the mines of Moria? Speaking of the mines of Moria, Riders uh, of Rome. <laughs> Elon Musk has announced via Twitter that Stardew Valley is coming to Tesla vehicles via their holiday update. So now you can do some farming while you drive while well, while your car drives you around. And as you know, tradition on this podcast, if there's farming news. Oh, you bet your ass we're going to talk about it. How about that corn crop? I'm just, I want to know, I want to see what this baby can run. Can we get, can we get Skyrim on this pitch? Yeah, probably. Get some Doom action? I want to play, oh man, what would I want to play? Can you pair a controller with it? What would I want to play? Oh, of course. You know, it's it's Bluetooth capable because you can sync your phone. Pair the old Xbox controller. Yeah. What would I want to play? Well, a car drove me around. Well, play a racing game, obviously. <laughs> Is that too obvious? What if I just play driving my car? <laughs> driving simulator. Yeah. 
What if I what if I'm in a Tesla but I play Big Rig Driving Simulator? So I'm a I, I'm a Big Rig Trucker. What would be nice for the Tesla, and it's probably already on there, but because of the size of the display and the shape, I feel like Tetris would be really good. Yeah, and your stick shifts your <laughs> joystick. That's not bad. So you're just constantly going out of reverse and neutral <laughs> drive, just trying to turn pieces. Tetris or like asteroids. Throw a classic on there because it's the longer screen. Yeah, a little Galaga action. Yeah, a little Galaga, Commander Keen. Just Pac Man would be cool too. Miss Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, yeah. Or Pac Man. What about Pac Man 3D? I don't know if you ever played that. I, 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 know, I, have. I have it on the GameCube mm-hmm. upstairs. It's just it's something. Number two, in an unexpected move today. I mean, first off, yeah, it's not today. It's unexpected. Is Man. it though? That but, was the hold thing. On, hold on. It's unexpected for a different studio <laughs> to maybe do this. Yeah. But what I'm about to say didn't happen today and is also not really that unexpected. THQ Nordic's parent company, Embracer Group, has purchased the Little Nightmares developer, Tarsier Studios. The acquisition includes the studio, all 65 current employees, and, intele- and intellectual property rights. Embracer slash THQ Nordic announced that it had bought... Tarsier, 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 sounds good. Tarsier, for an estimated $9.3 million in cash and $1.2 million in shares. Tarsier's bio also includes a, quote, conditional earnout payable over 10 years to certain sellers who will remain within, with Tarsier, end quote. They bought another studio. Yeah, another THQ one. THQ Nordic, back from the dead. Uh <clears throat> It's, I appreciate. I mean, they have to disclose it because they're publicly traded, anyways. Right. But I appreciate that they're just always just straight up like, "We bought this bitch. This is how much money we paid." Because like most companies <laughs> yeah. are like, "We don't want to tell you." Like, yeah. I I <laughs> also like to think that THQ Nordic walked in, or Embracer walked yeah. in with nine point three million dollars in cash and went, "Is this enough?" And they're like, "How about this other little bit?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> I already brought the cash. I can't pack it up. It's <laughs> But they, cause they, yeah, because they didn't bundle it. It was just thrown all together loosely into briefcases that they slammed shut. Oh. And then I was did, thinking they'd drag it in, in like a like a trash can or like a couple trash cans. They just dragged Ooh, it in. Yeah. And but, then like, they, but then as they're there, they're just like, well, there it is. They're like, how do you know it's nine point three million? And they go, we wait it. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> they're like, no. <laughs> we ballparked it. We're pretty close. We think we've gotten really good at this over the years. Yeah. We, how many studios have we bought now? It might be nine point three zero zero one. So like, all right, you get another hundred dollars. I mean, we're not too worried about it. We've got this buying thing taken care of. And like, no, we should count it though. And then you just get T eight, you know, Embracer C- CFO or whatever would be there for this. Just walks over and he's like, fine, if you guys want it that way. And just takes the first garbage can onto the conference table and just starts <laughs> shaking it out empty. He's like, we have a much better way. He's like, you want to count it now? <laughs> uh, Get me out of these hypothetical scenarios. I'll go on forever. Because then it becomes the boardroom comic where the guy's like, why don't we just do this? And he gets tossed out the window. Number three, <laughs> CD Project Red and The Witcher author. Uh, and uh, do you know how to say this guy's name? And- Andres Shapowski. Shapowski. Andres. Sa- nope. Sa- Sapkowski. Andrev Sapkowski. 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 I don't know. He's Polish. The author of The Witcher. <laughs> We're sorry. We're sorry. Don't sue. <laughs> has forced an agreement that ensures CD Projekt Red can continue to use said author's <laughs> creation. Uh, ending a disagreement that sprung up, sprung up last year. Details aren't offered in CD Projekt's notice of the agreement. And it's unlikely any will surface elsewhere. The company simply notes that the undisclosed deal, quote, solidifies and reinforces the company's relationship with whatever the guy's name is. I'm sorry, dude. He's Polish, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. I don't know. I believe. I believe you're correct. Uh, And fully clarifies the requirements and expectations of both parties, end quote, with both past and future video games, graphic novels, board games, and merchandise in consideration. So yeah, they uh, they worked it out. They hugged it out. So Witcher Four confirmed. They hugged it out, and CD Projekt Red probably stuffed a couple bills in his back pocket. Witcher Four confirmed. Yeah, 
Probably. I mean, they're doing a, they're doing a board game, right? That was. I mean, yeah. But I assume Witcher Four confirmed kind pseudo confirmed out of this. <clears throat> Not the Linux pseudo, but P S E U D O. All right, nerd. <laughs> All right, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> And Matt's dying. Number four, gaming peripherals of manufacturer Corsair has acquired Scuff Gaming, which makes a very popular line of high-end eSports controllers. While the terms of the deal weren't disclosed, the transaction is expected to be completed by the end of this month. And in in case you're curious, Corsair buying everybody in the peripheral market. Yeah. Yep. So, like... The way that the article was worded, um, it was like they wrote it in such a way that it made it sound like Logitech, because they're talking about how they're competing against Logitech. Right. That Logitech had bought like Astros and Razor. And I was like, what? And I had to like look it up. I'm like, what is they talking about? It's just the way they formatted the sentence was weird. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, because um, I don't think Razor's owned by any of them. Yeah, which it's it's basically Logitech, Razor, Corsair. Yeah, because they're all falling underneath their own umbrellas because Logitech is buying people up and Corsair is also doing the same thing. Yeah. But they're or owning them more as an umbrella and then just being like, you're with us. You're part of our family. Do what you need to do. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. If you start underperforming, we have problems. But, you know, otherwise, just do what you do. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It is because uh, it's goodbye for them. Yeah, I mean, I've I've never owned a scuff. I know people that have have owned scuffs. Yeah, they speak, a, they speak highly of them. Yeah, there it's a well known, but I don't, I don't want to say well known. It's a known name, but I don't need to buy uh, any crazy controllers. Same. And if I did, it'd be the Xbox Elite controller anyway. Yeah. Uh, speaking of controllers, Sony has announced a new accessory that adds two customizable back paddle buttons to a DualShock 4 controller. It's called the Back Button Attachment. Wow, they're creative. And it features a crisp OLED display. That's and a, unnecessary. <laughs> and a dedicated button that allows you to quickly remap controls on the fly without having to jump into a menu within the PS4. Uh, Sony says that it can store up to three unique control schemes at a time and that it works with all games, including PlayStation VR titles. Uh, this accessory will debut in the U.S. on January 23rd for $30. So $90 if you want to make a big controller. It's interesting. Um, I mean, it's interesting, especially what you're giving accessories still on a PS4. Yeah. Uh, maybe it'll work with the DualShock 5. If they call it the DualShock 5. If they don't, I'm going to be furious. From now on, come on. We, we are... need one company who's got a good naming scheme. From now on, we are TriShock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. You're right. Cerny would say that. From now on, our controllers will be called TriShock for the third motor that we added inside the controller. I can't talk like that without just creeping myself out. Oh God! Better psych yourself up. We're gonna get that Cerny talk pretty pretty soon. Oh, trust me, I'll be. Well and done, psyched out. What the hell happened during story number 10? Sorry, I'm looking ahead. <laughs> number six, a new global esports federation. Man, if there is no sentence like global esports federation after, you know, a Star Wars movie, the evil empire. <laughs> it's like the trade federation. Ah, damn Naboo. Fun part, fun baseball fact for you as you're learning baseball. Yankees, evil empire, same people. Yeah, they, they have a that. fully they have a fully functional Death Star now. I got that. It's like the I whole I don't clean know, well, cut Yankees well, thing. It's like stormtroopers, you know. Yeah, the whole thing is that they literally their name is the evil empire. But I think it was Cashman was on record a couple of years ago saying that they are building a death a Death Star, like he embraced it. And now that they signed Garrett Cole, it seems as the Death Star is up and fully operational now. Mm. They, they were always missing like that one piece. But they're, yeah. they, like, they have it now. So, fun news. Anyway, a new global esports federation has been announced with backing from Tencent and board members from multiple international esports companies and organizations. Key goals for the organization include setting up events, establishing national esports federations, and creating international fair play guidelines. 
Its aim is to become, quote, the voice and authority for the worldwide esports movement, end quote. And even though this part's not written, Nate says, wow, does that sound like China? Moving on. Though Tencent's backing is unique, this is not the first attempt at a governing body for esports. A European esports federation was founded earlier this year, and there was already an international esports federation. Additionally, a coalition of international games industry trade bodies agreed upon a set of universal esports principles, which they published last month. Holy shit, please move on. That's a lot of hands in the pot. Do you guys like esports law? I got your esports law with your esports law with some esports law. Bro, I took your esports law and I put some esports law on your esports law. I lowered it, then I raised it two inches. Esports law. Section B, esports law. Signed by Exhibit, esports law lawyer. Number seven. The Game Awards <laughs> has announced that its headline event last week reached. 45.2 million total live streams with viewership up 73% year over year from 2018. Uh, that number is reflective of the number of times a live stream was opened and viewed, not necessarily total number of people who watched. Um, but the event also drew a peak concurrent viewership of 7.5 million across all platforms including the co-streams of over 4,700 Twitch streamers. Uh, for comparison, earlier this year, the Fortnite World Cup peaked at 2.3 million concurrent viewers across Twitch and YouTube. Pretty good. Yeah. Not I bad. mean, I think no matter what, we've said it's getting better and better each year. Mm -hmm. uh, did you read the golf ball story? Yes. That they snuck in with golf and were like yeah. rolling down. And the guy's like, it's boring. And you're like, Maybe for you there, but like it's not meant for you there. Yeah, I think that's the. I, I had the same reaction. I read that story, and I'm like, that seems really. Uh, what was the word I was looking for? It just, I don't know. You know, it just seemed. Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I, I understand your view on the show as a whole, but why show up then? Yeah. Yeah. That that was the part that I whatever. Shall we move on to number seven, where we discuss eight? We discuss episode <laughs> number eight, actually, because Matt just, Matt just read seven. So <laughs> EA and Respawn have announced the first ever international multi-tournament esports competition for Esports Federation Esports Esports. A lot of esports this week. <laughs> and I have all of it. Multi-tournament esports competition. Dude, I cut out a lot of esports. Like, I just was like, we're not doing e there's too much esports. Yeah, I've already, I've already said the word too many times. Anyway, they announced a multi-tournament esports competition for Apex Legends entitled the Apex Legends Global Series. Nah, that wasn't good enough. That wasn't, eh. That's, oh, well. Yeah. The competition has a prize pool of over $3 million, and players from over 60 countries will be eligible. Registration begins January 25th, 2020, to play in initial online competitions with potential for advancement into live regional tournaments and later global events. The highest level of the tournament will consist of three Apex Legends Global Series Majors tournaments. Oh, my God. These guys have got to figure these names out. Um uh, with 103 player squads apiece, and the final championship match will consist of the 60 top teams in the world competing for $1 million in prizes. Not bad. I mean, a lot of money. You know, Apex is still going. We said it before after the Game Awards. Mm -hmm. We said it before on an earlier episode, but that we recorded after the Game Awards. That sentence was terrible. Uh, still going strong. Yeah. Everybody thought they were dead. They're making a good good comeback. There's Christmas skins in the game. Holiday skins, whatever you want to call them. They're alive there. and kicking. Red Dead Redemption 2. Has esports now, and it's sponsored <laughs> by... <laughs> uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 launched on PC last month on both the, X, uh, the Xbox. On both the Rockstar Games launcher and the Epic Games Store with the promise of a Steam release a month later. But whether because of the uh, the upcoming Steam release or technical difficulties uh, or its year and change on console already, uh, its Epic Games store sales numbers appear to have been a bit muted. 
Uh, Super Data shares that Red Dead Redemption 2 sold 408,000 units on the Epic Game Store in November, paling in comparison to Borderland 3's launch on the same storefront, which brought in 1.78 million units in its debut month. Uh, though to be fair, the launch was simultaneous with console, and Gearbox Shooter is still unavailable on Steam. Okay, I'm happy we have the caveat in there at the end. Yes. Had Red Dead launched on PC at the same time as console, those numbers would be over triple what they are. Yes. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's kind of hard to like... Because Red Dead is not a... You don't play it again. I think what they're compare. I think the problem here is that people are comparing Red Dead... To GTA. Yes. Which is not the same thing. Their yes. onlines are two completely different things. Yes. And that's the reason you buy it everywhere on GTA. Mm-hmm. Because the online's fun. Yes. Not that the Red Dead online isn't necessarily fun, but it's not GTA's online. Mm-hmm. They're, it's almost a very it's almost a niche crowd for that online. Mm-hmm. And I I think that you wouldn't what happened with GTA, the fact that like it sold so well at like even with later Three releases times over. on the PC. I don't think you could do that again now because I feel like people are uh, like we, we get through like our we attention span is it's so terrible. much shorter now. Well, it's terrible, but here's the thing. I would love to know of people that owned G. I, I want a few stats. I want people that own GTA the, uh, from the moment it came out. Mm-hmm. Also on the 360 and stuff. Yeah. From that, how many people then bought it on next gen? How many people then bought it on PC? How many people owned all three copies? Yeah. Then I want to know how many times has have that has that person completed a story. Then I want to know have any of the PC people. I want to know the percentage of PC people to complete the story on PC. The percentage of people on PC that completed the story that have also completed the story on anything else. Like I want to, I want to know those percentages. The I feel like it just becomes once you beat it the first time, it's online. Yeah, so that's what I did, and I'm sure that's what you did as well. Like, yeah, I beat this. I tried to play the story again on PS4 of being like, oh, I'll just kind of play through that again. While I was like usually waiting for somebody to get online or whatever. Yeah, and I got to maybe like a quarter of the way through, and I was like, I don't care. Yeah, I, I know the story. I'm good. I don't, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, all the shitty stories. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna love how I'm gonna read this too. I mean, this one's <laughs> just a shit story. It's just in there to say, hey, Facebook has cloud. Number 11. (laughs) Uh, Number 10. Facebook has acquired the Spanish cloud gaming company Play Giga. Giga? Giga? Play Giga? Sure. How do you want to say Play Giga. (laughs) Stadia. Well, I was trying to... I don't know. Uh, Which previously offered its services across Italy, Argentina, Chile, and Spain. The purchase was confirmed by Facebook to CNBC following reports last week from Cinco Dias, which... Dias, Dias, which complained that the, claimed that the deal was imminent and was valued at 70 million euros, around 78 million dollars. In a tweet confirming the news, Facebook Gaming's official Twitter account said, quote, we're thrilled to welcome at play giga official to the Facebook gaming team. We'll decline further for now. <laughs> So they put a comment and, with and a quote <laughs> on the tweet. They had comment, but without the O, it in a cloud emoji. I don't know what it shows up on your. I mean, it's it's a now that you say that it's kind of a cloud, but it was not. Oh, oh yeah, that looks terrible. Yeah, yeah. When you, <laughs> that's what I was like. <laughs> it it's like it's a cloud emoji, maybe, but I was just like, it literally says C. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Mine just says C black dot M M E N T, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> a message on Play Giga's website says that the team is quote moving on to something new end quote, but confirmed that it would be continuing its work on cloud gaming. So interesting that they purchased it, and then they're like, oh, we're just gonna go do something else. Yeah, probably they're probably like, oh, we're working on Facebook, a Facebook cloud network or something now. Well, either that or they're just like. I study as a thing. We'll go over there. Yeah. Here, you guys can have this tech. We're going to go do that one. <laughs> um. All right. Finally, got uh, 
weird one here. I have really the shitty stories, but this at least played out correctly because you're the Blade Runner guy. Yeah, uh, number 11, the classic 1997 Blade Runner adventure game, which was once nearly impossible to find and play, has been re-released on GOG. I'm going to stop you right there. Yes. Have you played it? I have not, but I think I'm going to. Okay, all right then. Here we go. I knew it existed, didn't know much about it. After it was re-released, obviously, it popped back up. Right. And reading about it, I'm like, oh, it actually sounds pretty interesting. Um, Blade Runner, the game. Uh, told a unique detective unique, story. Unique title. Yeah, right. Uh, told a unique detective story set parallel to the original 1982 film. It includes some existing characters voiced by Blade Runner actors Sean Young and James Hong. Never heard of them. Uh, but it features a new character named Ray McCoy, a Los Angeles Police Department uh, Blade Runner who has to search crime scenes and hunt down rogue replicants. Uh, Blade Runner won praise for capturing the original game's cinematic, I would think what I should say is the original movie's cinematic atmosphere. Uh, Development studio Westwood, the now defunct creator of Command & Conquer series, also created a complex branching narrative that randomized whether certain characters were humans or replicants, changing the game with each playthrough. Uh, Blade Runner is beloved to this day, but until very recently, the odds of a digital re-release seemed almost non-existent. Uh, Westwood lost the original source code in 2003 during a move, so players needed to find one of the game's increasingly rare hard copies or an unofficially cracked version of it and then go through the considerable trouble of getting it to work on a modern PC. As GOG explains on its site, the team of programmers spent eight years reconstructing the game from retail discs instead of the original source code, and they apparently worked with film studio Alcon Interactive Group to legally release it through GOG. It's a new beginning for a game that was once considered lost in time, like Tears in the Rain. Okay, Tears in the Rain. Is that like a Blade Runner thing? Yeah. It's oh, a, okay. It's a, the end quote famous thing. is. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never seen Blade Runner? None of them. There's only... Well, I guess there's two now, isn't there? 2049, baby. Interesting. Yeah, I've, I've debated watching the 2049 one because I... Pretty sure I have it on my computer. I would, but I feel like I should watch the first one. If you're gonna watch one, watch the first one and not the new one. Should I watch the first one and then watch the new one? Yeah, you kind of. Well, you could probably watch the new one without watching the first one, but you'd be doing it a massive disservice. What am I clicking on some? The the same link I had to click on last time. Yeah. That's all. Massive disservice because it's the first better, one or I, I think the first movie is better. Like I don't the first movie is clearly a cult classic and many consider like a ve- like, you know, like yeah, a good film. Yeah. Uh, the second one is not necessarily as well regarded, but it's it is for some reasons, but it's not for other reasons. Like okay. its cinematography is like out of this world, but um, it's a long movie. You know, it's not a, it's like Star Wars. So like the first movie is so well so revered that not everyone was going to be happy, right? So they didn't just remake a New Hope then. Uh, no. They actually progressed the plot. I mean, they tried to remake Return of the Jedi. All right, so what am I doing? Am I reading these off here? Yeah, they tried to remake Return of the Jedi. But... Uh, I just I just want you to do the same thing. We're going to hit the deals real quick. Uh, the, the one thing I am going to say, it is holiday time. So almost every single service or whatever has holiday deals going on. Steam's winter sale has officially started. Uh, Gog will probably have one. Origin might have something. Epic Game Store, I'm going to read you in a bit, has stuff going on. Uh, Green Man Gaming probably has stuff going on. All the games have all of their holiday stuff going on. Borderlands, I think, is doing codes like each day. I'm now currently Christmas flack in the game. I'm running around with candy canes and shit on. The horse head, I think. I'm just like, woo, what's up? Hey. Pew, pew. You guys want loot? Pew, pew. It's a fun time. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Bunch of holiday stuff. And I have Matt clicking on 
the jingle jam list that is listed from Yogg's cast on Humble Bundle because it's been seven days, obviously, as you know, since we've recorded. So that means there's seven more games on that list. But he'll once again call out his hot takes that have happened so far. So uh, there's your five dollar tier, which is just a shout out in the Ox cast, and then uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare animated calling card. So whatever, throw away there. Yep, cosmetics, uh, cosmetics, and cosmetics. Technically, I guess your name getting called out as a cosmetic. I don't know. Yeah, more or less. I paid two dollars uh, to get my name said on a podcast once. Uh, pay thirty dollars or more, and you could get Bastion. Good game. Kingdom New Lands. I think also a good game. Uh, Red Orchestra 2, Heroes of Stalingrad. And you get all of these, right? It's yeah, a, it's all a game, of them. game a day, I believe. Is yeah, the, and I'm not reading, stick. I'm not even reading all of them. Yeah, so it's, thir- what is there, 31 days in December? Uh, I don't know. Chivalry. That's fucking so helpful. Medieval Warfare. <laughs> Animal Super Squad. I, I like the title. 41% off your one time purchase of Displate.com. Who? We got some cool coupons on here. Some coupons? Coupons. Uh, I snipped those coupons. Snip, 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 snip. I'm like a crap. Two point hospital jingle gym jams. I'm curious what that is because two point hospital, we both know, fun time. You can do some crazy things in two point hospital. Matt's going to pretend like he doesn't know what I'm talking about, but he knows. Company of Heroes. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was hoping there was like, Championship Edition 2. There it is. That's what we put on the Tesla. Uh,. What else we got here? Uh, Motorsport Manager. Oh, perfect! That there you go, Matt. I don't know. I don't. Have you looked at that? That might be something up your alley. Uh, there's a Dead by Daylight sixty percent off Humble Store coupon. I don't get what the deal is with that, but that's cool. The coupons I we'll have to look into because that means you get sixty percent off Dead by Daylight in the Humble Store. Okay, it's that's, it's just that straightforward. Okay, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it's exactly what you read. Uh, which <laughs> you get a ton of Dead by Daylight. Uh, DLC for free uh, of Flesh and Mud chapter, Spark of Madness chapter, Curtain Call chapter, which I um, believe have some of like the uh, the killers in them. I don't know what they're called in Dead by Daylight. Hunters, enemies. I don't know. Uh, Super Chicken Catchers. Yes. Star Trek Online Federation Elite Starter Pack. Man, who gives a shit about Star Trek? Am I right? <laughs> Am I right, nerds? Got them. Uh, you a red shirt? <laughs> Sadness. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sadness for the poor one out for my red shirt homies. Uh, there's a ton of other ones on here, but I'm not going to read them all because there's, there's a lot. There's, there's a ton, and I there's none are, none are jumping out at me. But either way, there's a lot. Solid, solid value, as the kids would say. Bang for your buck. Bang penny the for, buck. Penny for your thoughts. Tiddlywinks in a manhole cover. All right, buy that up at Game Store. I got to get to bed. Yeah, I know you got to get to bed. We're getting there. Don't worry. Uh, this article comes from Engadget. They had the best like summation I could find. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of run through it real quick. Not going to read you the whole article, obviously. Yeah. But from Engadget, Epic Game Store celebrates the holidays with 12 free games. 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, kind of. A little out of order, though. Uh, the deep-pocketed Fortnite developer is celebrating the festive season with 12 free games between December 19th and January 1st, 2020, and a new po- offering will pop up each day. The first was the excellent start. So this started on the 19th, which was yesterday. Uh, it was the excellent turn-based strategy title, Into the Breach. Great game. And you would have had it for free had you just logged into Epic and hit give me. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh by the faster than light developer subset games, and it will be a, it's available for download for 24 hours. So you got 24 hours to claim these games. If you can't get to a computer, you can also redeem them through a mobile browser. Uh, and then once they're in their, your library, you have them forever. Uh, in addition, the company is offering everyone a $10 Epic coupon. Uh, there's a couple of restrictions. Uh, the game has to be above $15. It can't be used for in-game purchases, DLC, or season passes. Uh, but otherwise, you can spend it however you like. So you can drop ten dollar coupon on like Borderlands or Metro Exodus or Untitled Goose Game, uh, Outer Wilds, Outer Worlds, Control, What the Golf, or Shenmue Three. 
<laughs> I begrudgingly mention it, but yeah. Shenmue 3. <laughs> you guys remember that's a thing? Just wait a couple more months and it'll be really cheap. I, so? You'd have to pay me to play that game. I'm just saying, like, don't waste your your thing on that, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't burn your $10 on that. Burn it on one of the other things I mentioned way before that. But yeah, cool deals. It is the season. For buying gaming. games. It is the season for gaming, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Slap that tagline on a product and ship it. Okay, we should get out of here. I'm out. I feel like we have run the course of this episode. Next week is two episodes for you. Big, big, going big time. We got your regular news because there's a ton of news that happens during the holiday week. I'm sure we'll have a lot to cover. But then we'll reach game of the year conversation. If I need, I want so badly, I don't want to have just a game of the year podcast. I want people to submit categories they would like us to nominate and give awards to games for. I don't care if the category is best game featuring a goose. Like, that's silly. I'm fine with that. I want obnoxious, stupid categories. Best game that has a span, like, just stupid things. That ha- that protagonist has a blue outfit. Like, dumb, th- best games that has a sponsored plug. Like, Give me give me dumb shit like that. I want to have silly categories because the only serious category I want is game of the year. Submit all of those at game in uh, in the link in the podcast description below. Make sure you hit that bell, like, favorite, and subscribe. No. Uh yeah, it's in the description on YouTube. It's in the description of every podcast we put out. It takes you right to a Google Doc. Just fill it out real quick. All I need is the question you want me to answer. And at this point, if you haven't filled it out for giving me a sweet video game category to give an award out in, make it for anything. We'll just make it our awards podcast. We'll eventually do game of the year. You want to know best pizza of the year. You want to know best meal Matt and I made each other of the year. You want to know best candy we had all year. You want to know how many diabetes ranks we're at. Did we lose our left foot? Throw it all in there. We'll answer it. And that being said, we'll see you in seven days. Bye-bye.